<clears throat> hey guys, Mike Bland from Shadow Company Investigations. Um, looks like the milk has been spilled on this uh, Texas shooting deal. And, you know, it's very uh, discouraging when the truth comes out on things. Um, so for the last few days, I've been hearing about this tragic event and people talking about um, these cookie cutter things they always talk about of, well, why would this kid do this? And what's the investigation going to reveal? And what could have been done? You know, was there security or there police? And everyone's like, why did he buy a gun? How did he buy the gun? Was there a background check? Well, I don't know at what point in time people lost their minds, but those details have came out and they're the same details that have came out on every single active shooting case in the last 20 plus years. And what the details are is that this kid came from a drug addicted family I'm sure there was abuse and neglect involved. Lived on a mattress at his grandmother's. The minute he turns 18, he legally purchases two AR-15 assault rifles. Or some people like to call target rifles. But in either case, um, <laughs> I'm literally baffled. Like, I'm, I'm literally almost at a loss for words. So, so people... So this kid's picked on in school because he has a speech impediment. So there's that. There's his background, his family background. There's the fact he's living with his grandmother. His friend literally asks him, why did you buy the AR-15s? He says, mind your own business or don't worry about it, basically. Um, okay, pretty big red flag there. He then posts on social media to a random girl. Um, Here's my gun pics. The girl replies, what's this have to do with me? And he says, I have a little secret to tell you. He posts on social media. These kids have, uh, these little kids need to be scared. Uh, he then posts, I'm going to kill my grandmother. And then 15 minutes before going to the school, allegedly posts that he's going to the school. And then on top of all of that, he shoots two police officers. So... <clears throat> Where I'm going with all this, and for those of you who are smart, I think you probably already know. Every possible warning, just like also many other active shooting attacks, and just like the marathon bombers with the, uh, the two Russian brothers that did the bombing there, was on the FBI watch list, but yet was able to pull that off. Just like many other domestic, domestic and foreign terrorists, also on... FBI watch list, still go carry out their attacks. Uh, active shooters, bullied in school, neglected by the families, developing psychological problems that are you know being displayed mentally, physically, in every way possible, isolating themselves, amassing an arsenal, and no one in society notices. Even when they post on social media, very concerning things, and, and that's where it gets also very interesting because there's people who have posted things on social media that were not even closely a threat and were visited by federal agents and questioned. But yet, when an 18 year old has all of this profile going on and is literally posting, I'm going to kill people, there's no one at the school waiting. And then those very last final moments, you know, let's say the school did have 15 minutes warning or just social media in general. The fact that someone couldn't call law enforcement and if they know where this kid's at or the, the vicinity, geographical area, the closest school is by, I'm pretty sure that's fair warning. And when I was in law enforcement, I mean, you know, between a phone call to 911, by the time that's put out to law enforcement, and if someone's even halfway doing their job and halfway intelligent, they're obviously going to be responding to the nearest schools. So there's so, so many <clears throat> shortcomings in this, in this kind of case, once again. And me being a realistic guy, 
the thing that infuriates me and and also just baffles me is and, and these little kids these little kids are not at fault but society as a whole the fact that society is so worried about themselves and where i'm going with that is there's kids i went to school with that were also bullied and picked on uh, some of these kids probably acted out at some point i think one of the young men later killed himself over this and to this day i've heard no one talk about this no one else i've went to school remembers this kid talks about this kid anything wants to accept or address that we are all at fault every single one of us is responsible and at fault for honestly and that's where we have to take accountability as humans and uh, in this country we are we are raising our kids and society to live off excuses and in these cases like this you know fire a principal or fire a police chief or fire a news anchor and that's just gonna that's gonna make this okay or, or start talking about guns okay first of all guns have nothing to do with any of this um if uh and the gun laws have even less less i don't know any guy i've ever arrested i don't know any terrorists or any active shooters that have were sitting home and reading about the gun laws um not to mention a person that is mentally disturbed or who has been raised in a drug addicted family neglected abused bullied for a speech impediment there's nothing preventing that person from walking into a gun store when they're of legal age in their state and purchasing a firearm with a legal background check. So the problem is, again, the problem that people don't want to accept. It's a people problem. And it's also a people not caring about other people problem. We're all concerned about ourselves and living and being that way is going to get everyone the same results if everybody keeps continuing to be the same. If you're gonna do average behavior, you're going to get average results. And what that is culminated in now is little kids being killed. But yet, the part that infuriates me again is this attitude that instantly is put on by media and these political leaders. We just don't understand it. We're at a loss. We need we need prayers here. We we want to investigate what the reason was. Really? The guy told you he's on the way. Really? And you want to understand this. I don't know where the disconnect is here, but I was born and raised in this world of what used to be called reality, and I've been in law enforcement investigations ever since then for 25 years. So I'm pretty sure. When society, when this guy's friends, when this guy's family, when this guy's fellow students, his fellow employees, whatever, hear of one concerning comment and none of this, and there was numerous, and there was even warnings, and while on in route. <clears throat> when someone buys two AR-15s, the very second they turn 18, and you ask them why they have these weapons, and they say, don't worry about it, kind of a red flag, just a little bit. You know, I am more, you know, I'm more ticked off that everyone failed these little kids. Everyone, everyone literally involved from society to law enforcement, to these schools, especially I feel society as a whole is at fault. And I also feel, and so if those of you who want to place blame and go firing mayors and police chiefs and principals and student counselors and, and finding someone to pin this on, you can do that. That person will go find another job. This problem will stay. And that doesn't solve problems. That is a cookie cutter. Blame, guilt, blame game, blame shifting, whatever you want to call it and trying to change the narrative. You can 
do like Biden said and stand up to your gun lobbyists and you can pass new gun laws, make them so strict. You can take away guns, take away air 15s. And the guys like the guy that did the truck attack where he killed literally like 80 people, ran over, smashed them to death with a cargo truck. Or you can kill people with a knife all day, every day, just as efficiently as with the firearm. Some people don't think or believe that, but I am here to tell you that being a former law enforcement officer and seeing the devastation and the trauma that a knife blade causes, uh, you can take every gun away. And if a kid locks himself in a room with 20 students with a knife, you're gonna get the same outcome. So people focusing on these details that I've learned, again, as over a very long career in law enforcement investigations, these details that frankly don't even matter, where they want to focus on and after the fact, because first of all, these are details that should have already been rectified in place in everyday common life. If our country is going to be a war zone, which it clearly is, I mean, for a better lack of words, when we have entire classrooms of little innocent, you know, honest, just totally pure kids, little mini human beings running around, and these kids are being horrifically killed in front of each other and locked in a classroom by a barricaded subject. And on top of that, they couldn't get in the room to stop this kid. People were begging and pleading with law enforcement with the SWAT teams to act and do something. And they had to get somebody with a key to let them in. So that there, that's a huge problem. You know, response speaking, tactically speaking, security consulting speaking, just common sense, one-on-one, everyday speaking. Uh, they said this kid was in there in this school an hour before he was taken down. An hour is a very long time. A person can do pretty much anything in an hour. And, in, and when you have a bunch of people, victims locked in there, held hostage, being killed, whatever, so, and I know this video, this video is, it's going to reach, you know, 35 people, 50 people, but I just had to voice this because being a private investigator now, my job is to provide and deliver and expose the truth, I'm an agent of truth. And what I've learned is you can never hide from the truth and the truth will always, you know, shine through to those people who are looking for the truth and you really can't say care what anyone else says because those few good people still left out there and that really want to understand things and and also hear them from people that have experience like myself and and I will tell you what the real problems are and people will sit and come up with thousands of excuses and reasons other than what the real problems are and it's because no one wants to hear the truth. So as long as we keep failing to act and practicing malfeasance instead of acting as, first off, basic humans. Secondly, responsible citizens. You know, thirdly, stop caring about only ourselves and our lives and, and recognize when people around us have a problem and making sure that person gets the attention or help, undivided attention they need. And reporting things to law enforcement when people are making comments like this young man did, this young, very evil man. Uh, you could tell by looking at this kid's picture in two seconds, this guy was, you know, evil had consumed this guy. Uh, people want to, well, was he crazy? Was it a criminal? Was it evil? Again. When you're killing 20 little kids, does it matter which one it is? It's, it, and, it, and I'll answer the question, it's pure evil because no one, that's not something a criminal does. A guy that's just wanting to commit crime, 
or mad because he's been fired somewhere even that snapped that's that's so far beyond so far removed from those even scenarios of uh, those active shooter scenarios this is like next level pure evil to walk up to each child and execute them just one by one and and, and god forbid there's a class with 40 kids or a seminar or a school event because I can tell you right now, that's coming. And these people that are doing these attacks, they are I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Um, me coming from law enforcement, when I did the SWAT stuff, went to police sniper school and learned all this training. One thing they always told us was that these kids that are doing these attacks, uh, attacks and criminals that practice and they play video games and this kid they also said was was obsessed with playing call of duty the same and, and for you guys who are you know law enforcement and military you already know this but a lot of civilians do not um, but these kids that are playing these games know this as well and they have proven scientifically that the same aiming and controlling and moving and shooting on the screen of these games is equivalent to practicing aiming and shooting with a real weapon there are some differences of course a real weapon is going to recoil and kick and be very loud but at the end of the day the hand and eye coordination that is needed in a real shooting scenario is the same as the video game so if even they only play the game and they don't ever fire on real targets when they purchase that weapon they can be very effective in fact, this kid shot two police officers. So, you know, it, 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 the way that thing was going, I'm surprised he didn't kill them. I'm surprised he didn't shoot more. So, you know, and we're gonna see the same thing 10 years from now, five years from now, three months from now. There's gonna, there's not gonna be any school security. There's not gonna be any more officers at the school than there is now. And we're gonna have the same things happening and the same excuses. Shooters are gonna fit the same profiles. Society is gonna to continue to worry about themselves. And we're gonna be in the same scenario. So for those people, those of you who homeschool your kids, kudos to you because I can tell you that uh, I have never had my own actual kids. I have helped raise some. And there's absolutely no way I would be sending my kid to a public school. There's absolutely no way in hell. I think that it's pretty clear that the system, this state, local, federal government, which one of their duties is to what? Keep law in order. You know, the, 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 being a former cop, I can tell you in 97, us cops were handcuffed then, which for those of you who don't know the term, not allowed to do our job. And there's always, every year, more reasons preventing that fact. And now, what you have is a society that is not only losing its mind, addicted to drugs, addicted to drama, addicted and overwhelmed with stress, addicted and overwhelmed with mental health issues, and that are not addressed, are receiving help and people just turning to drugs and violence to solve everything and also turning away from God to throw in the mix and everyone arming themselves to the teeth like some third world country what you have is what's called a ticking time bomb a this country is literally on a path to destruction and then people that are, you know, fleeing the cities and moving off grid and building their little cabin and tiny home, people call those people crazy. I guess my question to you is, who's more crazy? So this is going to keep happening. And until people have a come to Jesus meeting and they decide that police officers' lives are valuable, you know, veterans returning home with PTSD and killing themselves by the hundreds daily are valuable, that human lives are valuable, that kids are valuable, babies are valuable, human life is valuable. And stop talking about things like gun laws. 
and, and focusing on real problems. But people are also not seeming to do that. They're not seeming to care, change, let alone make a YouTube video like this and even just try to voice some concern still. I put in my 25 years now of helping, doing nothing but helping people with their problems. But at the end of the day, what I've learned is I've, I've shouldered a lot of this myself and tried to save the world. And I learned long ago as a rookie cop when I was 21 that that is, was not realistic. It was a noble gesture, but I clearly didn't save the world. So um, I'm not sure with this incident, you know, what's going to happen, what backlash there's going to be as far as people taking any responsibility for clearly, just blatantly, not even remotely doing their jobs. So I'm uh, honestly... As a former cop and as a private investigator, I'm frankly disgusted, embarrassed even, and as a human being, um, I can tell you that had I personally known of this guy and seen or heard any of these uh, indicators, that I would have been making you know, numerous phone calls until someone made contact with this guy. So the fact that never happened, um, you know, has to make you scratch your head and ask you what's going on. So, um, and it's like Tim Kennedy's channel, uh, Green Beret was talking about the other day, it's title, no one's coming to save us. You know, I think that sums it up right there. Um, a lot of guys like me now have probably are on the same page and have realized that, you know, you're not going to save the world. You're not going to save people. You're not going to stop this stuff. You have to protect yourself and your family because, again, there's numerous problems going on right now. But no one's coming to save anyone. The system cannot provide it anymore. The police cannot provide it. The school sure as heck can't provide it. And... You know, if you have a family, my advice is to really sit down, get out your whiteboard, have a meeting with reality for about an hour with your, with your family and, and rethink things, rethink how you live your life safety wise, situational awareness wise. If where you're working, if where you're traveling, if where your kids are going to school, if where you live at, if all these things are, are, if they're logical, if they make sense, if they're safe, if they're bringing more stress and problems and, and safety problems and concerns to your life, then you might want to make some adjustments. That's my advice, guys. Thanks for watching.